I'm just an average guy who loves the outdoors. I love to hunt and I love to fish. Somewhere along the way I ended up with a video camera in my hand. So now I'm just cruising around checking out cool destinations. So sit back, put your feet up and come on along. I'm Brian Whitens, and this is where I've been. I just saw a huge fish just come up. I know, up right I just, I saw, I got a brown right in front of us here. Probably 22, 23 inches. Being from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, I, like most of you watching, have spent a lot of time hunting and fishing. That is <laughs> Most of the hunting and fishing I've done has been in the Midwestern U.S. and Canada. I had this monster, monster rainbow on. Now what do I got? But occasionally in my travels, I get the opportunity to venture out of the Midwest. This trip brought me to Colorado. Beautiful scenery, great people, and great fishing. Nice. Boxwood Gulch, in Shawnee, Colorado, about an hour west of Denver. Looking for big rainbow trout and big brown trout. Starting off today with some nymphs. Got a nice rainbow right there. Really nice rainbow. It's a beautiful morning. Oh, he's taking that little midge. Ah. Beautiful rainbow trout, beautiful fall day. And good morning, Mr. Fish. What a way to start. Boy, just beautiful colors. Boy, that's a light colored rainbow. Took that little, little midge. Oh, let me get him to stop. Stop moving around here. You can take a look right there. We got the little beadhead RS2. Here's our first fish. What a way to start, huh? Starting off today with some nymphs and uh, see what we can do. I think these fish see me coming and they just, they go hide. Yeah. Yeah. There's like three or four 20 inch plus fish just lined up right here. Yeah. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh. Doubles action. <laughs> Can you beat this, huh? It's pretty nice. Nice fall day. This guy took the egg, it looks like. So ate that little flashback pheasant tail again. Another rainbow. How come all your fish are bigger than the ones I catch? <laughs> They're is, getting bigger as we go. This is this a good is... one here. This is 19, 20 inches. One thing, you just gotta kinda take your time with these bigger fish. Pretty decent rainbow. Rainbow cut bow kind of looking to fish. A lot of cut in them, I guess. Pretty good cut in them. Right there. Oops. There he goes. This, this is that little orange micro egg. In the fall, they, for a nymph in the morning, it's little size 20 curve shank hook, little yarn egg. And then we're fishing this little RS2. It's a little mayfly emerger. And that pattern originated with a guy in Denver named Rim Chung. 
and he named it the RS2. It's one of the most popular South Platte flies around and it's been around since 1979. It's a great little little pattern. This one looks like a brown. Boy, there's another fish chasing it. Yeah, this is a smaller brown, but there's another brown trout right behind it that's twice the size trying to catch it, wondering what's going on. Ate that little RS2. Look at the spots on that. Woo! In the fall color. Man, I always get my hands wet before I pick them up. And then a lot of times if you turn them upside down, look at that little RS2. Right there, I turn them upside down and get some little calm. This feels like a female, maybe with some some eggs, but that was a smaller brown. There was one twice that length chasing that one in. Oh, you look a big one? Big one. Ooh. See Saw if I can eating. trick him into getting in the net. You gotta get caught right away. Oh yeah, big rainbow. Took that little merger. What a football. Come on, buddy. Man, that thing. Oh, oh behind the rock. Came out. He went underneath that rock down there. Let's see if we can get him here. Oh! What a football, huh? Woo! That one took me for a ride. Look at how purple that fish is. Mm. Yeah, little little merger once again. Can't get my hands around it. Wow. Look at that. We got the, the flies up in the corner of the mouth. When you fish here at Boxwood, you, you always have a guide. What a, that's a female, big. Boy, they've been eating well, huh? Doesn't get much better than that. Like I was saying, you, you watch me and juggling around with the net and the rod, but you always have someone here to help you with a net, especially when you catch that fish of a lifetime. That's a good one. Woo. We have at Boxwood, a little bit less than one mile of water and at Long Meadow, the other property, which is right adjacent to us, it's just across the fence line, same river, we have two miles of water there. Boxwood, you have the facilities, you have the clubhouse, the patio that we're sitting in right now. Long Meadow, we've purposely kept a little more primitive. People like the primitive experience sometimes. Man, this Boxwood is something, especially in the fall. What kind of fish are in here? We have rainbows, browns, brook. Cut, yep, brook trout, cutthroats. Uh, there's a variation of a rainbow called a palomino, which is quite rare. Uh, then we have a couple of subspecies of, uh, of uh, rainbows in the cutthroat area. Uh, so how many would you say, John, altogether, if you count the subspecies? Maybe like seven different distinct kind of Probably. trout. Probably, yeah. That's that's what I usually think. Let's that out. This has got some cutthroat in them. You can see the orange slash under its jaw. It's part rainbow, car, part uh, cutthroat. Let's go ahead and let him swim away. Beautiful fish. That fish is about probably about 18, 19 inches. Kind of a typical boxwood fish. Uh, a lot of good fish in here. Good cut bow. You about just ripped it out of my arms there. Did you see him hit that thing? If you book the day, you'll get the entire property to yourself. Whether that's two people in your group or 20 in your group. We do some corporate trips of 20 anglers at a time, but by and large our typical size group is about four people. 
deep there well, too. That's what I'm letting it swing down there a little bit. You know, a couple yeah. of them are chasing it, but that one. He ate it just when I lifted it up. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I can give you a hand too if you It'd want. It'd be more beautiful in my net. I got a little bit bigger hook on this one. It's a little bit bigger midge. Maybe he'll stay hooked up better. Got a good bend in that. Look at that. It's a pretty good rainbow. Nice. Boy, it's, look at he's that. He's a fat dude, man. Jeez. He's about, I don't know, that's about four pounds. And he's only and you like... you got some big hands. He's like 19 <laughs> inches long, but he's just... Look at that. That's, that is a beast right there. I'm going to let you go. Look at that dude. Jeez. Beast. They're eating well. There's bigger ones. That's pretty big. <laughs> We're getting more towards winter now. A hole like this, they just start to kind of gather up in it. The water's low. So anywhere where you got any kind of depth or anything like that, you're gonna find a big bunch of fish. If you find a few fish, you've probably found a whole bunch. So if you can handle just a little cool weather in the morning, October is beautiful here. The trout are still real, real active trying to get fat for winter. Like there's one right there. Perfect example. I, I'm sitting there looking at this about 20 inch plus fish and this 16, 17 incher just jumps in there. I'll <laughs> come down and I've got a... But I think I can get him. Oh, he's I think got I can get it. him. As long as you don't scare him. Oh, that's him. a good fish. I think he's bigger than 17. He's about 18 inches maybe, 19 inches, but it's just a dink compared to the one I was fishing to. There's two real big ones sitting right there. You can almost pick out the one you want to cast to if you're... I can't get those big ones to eat it though, they'll, but they'll eat it this afternoon. We're just still early yet. Just fat, getting fat for winter. Oh yeah. Got that little RS2 right in the corner Just of the a mouth. little dinky little fly. Look at that. <laughs> Look at how fat that dude is. Yeah. Been caught before it looks like, but I mean, talk about chunk city. Look at that. Flash on it, it seems flash. like. In uh, Shawnee, Colorado, at Boxwood Gulch Ranch. Uh, it's about an hour southwest of Denver, and uh, it's kind of mid-afternoon. We've already had a really good morning. We we were fishing some nymphs this morning, some small egg patterns, and some real tiny mayfly nymphs, and uh, did real well. Caught a lot of nice fish, uh, a lot of 18 to 20 inch fish uh, on nymphs. The fish are a little lethargic. Uh, it's mid-October, sneaking up towards the end of October, and. And uh, you know it's kind of tiny nymphs most of the time. All the nymphs are immature, so it's kind of slow nymph fishing in the morning. Subtle takes, but as the water warms up, uh, it's after lunch now. It's afternoon. We're going to try to come out, whack a few on streamers. We've got some big streamers. Some of the fish are pretty aggressive yet. There's some browns that are spawning. There's some places that these fish hang out underneath bushes and stuff like that where you just can't get any kind of drift to them with a with a nymph rig or even a dry fly, but swing streamer, streamers in, down underneath some of the branches and stuff and get them in some of the pockets where normally you can't get at them. And uh, we're gonna try to whack a few big ones. Uh, there's a lot of big rainbows, a lot of big brown trout. And uh, that's kind of what people come here for in the fall, uh, some of these bigger fish. So we're gonna give it a try. We got some real heavy pocket water here. Uh, there's some stuff that's kind of nestles in underneath some bushes where you can't really get any drifts. But if we cast across and down to them, we can swing streamers in underneath the bushes and we can and we can get some big fish. And that's what we're up to this afternoon. So we're gonna give that a try and see how it goes. There's a 
big one. Rainbow. That, that brown looked bigger. There's another brown in there too. This rainbow just came out of nowhere. Average size rainbow, but trying to get bigger. Well, it's not exactly what we wanted to do, but kind of the right idea with that stinger hook. Well, that's a small fish on a streamer, but still, it's a 13, 14 inch fish. Nice fat rainbow. Aggressive, he hit it pretty hard. People often ask, because they see a lot of fish and they catch a lot of fish when they're here, and the typical question is, are the fish trapped? No, the fish can go anywhere they want in the entire Platte River drainage, but most of them stay here, call Boxwood and Longmeadow their home, because over the years we've done a tremendous amount of stream improvement. Stream improvements, fish the, habitat. Just the gradient right here too, these, these two meadows. Long Meadow Ranch, which Good is point. just above here. Boxwood, it's just two big hay meadows that it comes through. One side is, you know, mountainous and stuff like that. You see a lot of rock outcroppings, but it just meanders through uh, real nice flat hay meadows and that's just where they end up. I like to use this little yarn indicator. <clears throat> it's kind of natural colored. Sort of matches the, you can see a lot of little aspen leaves on the surface. I don't think it spooks the fish very much, but the yarn for an indicator on nymphs is real sensitive. It moves on any little movement of the nymphs. And this particular color here seems to kind of blend in with the leaves. So one thing we do here when we use yarn indicators, a lot of people kind of shy away from using the yarn indicator because they say it doesn't float so well. Uh, one thing I do is I just take a little wooden dowel and I put the rough side of velcro, I just get that sticky velcro that you get from the store and put it on a dowel rod and then what I'll do is I'll take my floatant, my little bottle of gel floatant and I'll squirt a little bit of floatant right on to the right on to the velcro stick. You come right up to your indicator and you already have floatant in the velcro so when you puff this out this makes it float like a dry fly but with this yarn indicator, you're seeing even the, the subtlest strikes, the most subtle strikes, and, and uh, you're seeing everything that happens to the nymphs as they, as they drift. And this, uh, little pe this little homemade tool really helps in uh, puffing up that yarn and getting floating all the way through it. I uh, carry a lot of yarn with me. It's just macrame yarn. It's a braided yarn. And you just cut off a little two inch section and uh, loop it onto your leader. For your indicator it looks real natural and uh, I think John may use a little different color it comes in all sorts of different colors I I tend to like this you know natural color that is a huge fish he's right here you can grab the line it's it's odd x tipping <laughs> Holy smokes! Take the take the fly out, then I'll come down. Okay, there. hang on. Take the fly out. Holy smokes! Take the take the fly out, then I'll come down. Okay, there. hang on. Take the fly out. That is a pig. Flies off. Look at the size of that guy. I'd say that fish is about 24 inches. Maybe 25, right about 24. It's beautiful. Nice. Sometimes people ask about lodging. We don't do lodging here. 
but there's numerous bed and breakfasts in the area. There's a hotel about five miles away. And a lot of our customers stay in Denver or some of the ski areas. We're about 90 minutes from Breckenridge, about 90 minutes to an hour or two hours to uh, Vail, so some of them stay there. I tell people, they ask, they ask me, when's the best time to come? I, and I tell them, the best time is when you, when you can come. Whenever it works out for you, that is the best time to come. The fishing is always good. You know, one of the, one of the reasons why the fish are, you know, pretty good size here, it, it is all private. I mean, a lot of this stretch of this river is private, up and down, not just here. And most of the, most of the river is catch and release. This right here, of course, is all catch and release. Barbless hooks. Flies only. We take care of the fish real nice. It's all guided. That helps. The, the fish don't get abused too bad. And, and they're in the river again for somebody else to enjoy. So you can come up here and in 15 minutes, a half an hour, a guy can have you fishing proficiently enough where, you're, where you can catch fish. Yep. You know, you're not going to be an expert at it after the first day, but uh, we can teach you how to catch the fish. And um, do it with different techniques. So that's like why it's so nice. Beginners, kids, we've had, I don't know how many kids we've had this year. I saw pictures of 24, 25, 26 inch fish right. that kids caught. Mm -hmm. So beginners, somebody that's never done it before, uh, business groups just entertaining for a day, people coming in from out of town that have never ever done it, no problem. I had this huge red rainbow on, now I got a kind of a silvery one. Now I got a different fish. Two fish, one cast. I had this monster, monster rainbow on. Now what do I got? <laughs> now I got sort of an average size rainbow. Well, that's two fish and one cast. That fish charged upstream so fast he just got off. I mean, it was like a seven, eight pound fish. Looks like a cut though. Now I don't see any markings, rainbow. I had fish. the beast. I saw him jump. I had the beast and I lost the beast. <laughs> oh man. Did you see it? Yeah. When it rolled over? I saw him jump, man. It was I mean, it was like this. This is a 24, 25 inch fish. Mm. Big, bright red stripe. Yeah, big red stripe. I'm Brian Waitens, and that's where I've been. Oh well. One more time. <laughs>